please welcome the most admired woman in the world, Dave and Barry Humphreys always described himself as a recovering comedian because he could never give it up. Oh, I bet you were once an attractive woman. <laughs> I have to ask, have you ever considered life without performing? Is that no, possible? not really. I get very irritable. This is very interesting. You've got a little koala bear there. Yes, it's a marsupial frock. It's, <laughs> isn't it gorgeous? Well, laughter is a marvellous thing. For the laugher and the person who induces the laugh, it's therapeutic. It's like some kind of cosmic forgiveness. To hear them there, it's like a fire going up a chimney, whoosh. And just something I said did that. Born John Barry Humphreys in 1934, he grew up in suburban Melbourne with his architect father Eric and mother Louisa. It was safe, comfortable and, according to Barry, suffocating. Melbourne, in the days when I grew up, was a rather oppressive kind of place. There was a tremendous influence on cleanliness, for example, cleanliness and niceness. Above all, one had to be very, very nice. My mother once said, you know, your father and I really don't know where you came from. And this feeling of being a cuckoo, a changeling perhaps, really upset me because I thought perhaps I'm, I'm adopted. He went to Melbourne Grammar and then to Melbourne Uni to study law, but caught the acting bug. In 1955, he unveiled his greatest creation, a little Aussie housewife from Mooney Ponds named Edna. You see, so many people think of Australia as a, as a land of kangaroos and rabbits. But this isn't so. No, it's absolutely true. In the 1970s, she was back as Barry Crocker's aunt in the Barry Mackenzie films. Barrington, if your father was here now and heard you talking like that, he'd turn over in his grave. The critics panned the films for poor taste, something Barry Humphreys would never apologise for. My characters are really created in order to provoke. They're not always politically correct, I'm happy to say. It seems almost miraculous that Barry's alter egos became household names. Dowdy Edna transformed into Dame Edna, leaving Mooney Ponds behind to become a housewife megastar, a globe-trotting A-list celebrity rubbing shoulders with the elite of entertainment and even royalty. The Jubilee Girl is here, Papa! I should warn you, the show is a little loud. In fact, you might enjoy it more at Balmain. be deafening in Windsor, I'm afraid. Where do you stay when you're in the UK? Do you have a place over here or do you do you went? What do you do? I have a friend. <laughs> a lovely woman, elderly. I can't say who it is. She occasionally wears a crown. <laughs> and she lives in a quite a comfortable, <laughs> detached home. <laughs> but never forgetting where he slash she came from. Oh, Ray, Sorry, we're in the town hall. You know, the Lord Mayor has always wanted to show me his enormous organ. Ah. Isn't it magnificent? <laughs> it isn't. Uh... And often returning to her and roots... On the corner where there was once a dignified little sweet shop. Look. The Mooney Ponds Kebab House. It's really good to have you back. You're a great Australian icon. Oh, an icon, am yes. I? Many times I've thought, I wonder if Edna ever thinks of Mooney Ponds. I do. I mentioned I put it on the world map. I did. You did indeed. That's, that's the only suburb that visitors know in Melbourne. Isn't that wonderful? It Thanks is. to me. Is. For comedy's sake. Ray. Hello, Edna, how are you? How are Love you? To see you. You're always Good looking to see. young and lovely. That's a lovely peak you have there. Modified Beatles haircut of his. <laughs> Here she is. Oh, 
Dame Edna is happy to be a megastar role model. And she accepts that the suburban epicentre of Melbourne Aren't these two a wonderful pair? has now moved from Mooney Ponds to Fountain Lakes. She doesn't make us feel in superior no, or anything. No. And do you know what I like? She doesn't do laboratory humour, no, Ray. No, she doesn't wear blue. There is a rumour that Dame Edna is a bloke in a frock. Oh, what? That is the that most is... ridiculous thing I've ever no, heard. No, that is just... You are scraping the belt, muck raking, Ray. Oh, yeah, and you don't go there, Ray. Don't do that. You don't need to. But did you share a dressing room today with Dame Edna? Yes, we did. We didn't see and anything everything's suspicious. in place, yes. all right? She's stacked. Everything's Can I say that? where it's meant to be, She's right? Built. Here we are, Ray Martin. Mooney Pond Station. Brings a tea to you, I guess. No, it doesn't. I don't. <laughs> I don't have sentimental feelings about a, a railway station. Always pushing the boundaries. I was chatting away. <laughs> And I saw some little Japanese people in the front row having a lovely time. And I said to these sophisticated Broadway people, oh, we've got some lovely little <laughs> in the audience. <laughs> and everywhere, went, oh! You can get it down too, I can tell you. Often leaving the world's best interviewers speechless. Well, it's after half past six now, isn't it? <laughs> and you still can... on a desert island with a pig. No. <laughs> 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 No, you can't. You can't tell that one. Is this a dry run or is this going straight to air? Are we on delay? That's what I want to know. If we're not on delay, I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> when I started becoming successful, as you will find when you, <laughs> I learned something. Put your family last. <laughs> Don't let them. Yeah. Don't <laughs> let them inhibit you. Yeah. Sometimes it's better for us to neglect them. <laughs> and uh, I've always put my career first. For those of you who aren't too crash out of the geography, <laughs> Tasmania is a triangular continent. <laughs> a bit on the bushy side. <laughs> Oh, for goodness sake! What was that, Jane? He aimed his sharp wits at anyone and everyone, even the rich and powerful. These little kiddies from the neighbourhood and from other neighbourhoods used to come along and they'd pop in and sit around the kitchen table. <laughs> you remember that little Rupert who delivered the papers? <laughs> and they could still be friends. Barry is a creative person. He's a very complicated personality. He's capable of great warmth, uh, great friendship, um, and yet uh, he's equally, on the stage, uh, capable of really cutting, tough wit. And that's what makes him so interesting. Well, Liz is vulgarity on roller skates. No story is too filthy, no gesture too lewd, no idea too racist that he cannot articulate it with his own special kind of joy. Nothing personal, madam. And that spelt trouble as the world of comedy became more politically correct. Always in a loose denture. Barry Humphreys isn't getting, you know, out of step with this society that we've... Oh, I fine. hope so. I'd <laughs> hate to be in step with the society. The, the, I certainly The would. world today requires us to be very accepting we're required to be insane. Uh, the political correctness is the new Puritanism is scary. The Melbourne International Comedy Festival's top award used to be known as the Barrys. That ended three years ago. Is it PC for all ages, for all time? Probably not. But God, don't take away an award. We need more awards named after Barry Humphreys. I'm sorry, I can't pick you, really, because... <laughs> See this little blouse of yours? It would strobe on television. It would... <laughs> strobe is an old Scandinavian word meaning ghastly. Perhaps the true genius was how Barry Humphreys managed to separate himself from Dame Edna. She, the shining star, he was the shady manager. 
and through the magic of television, they could appear in the same room. Did Dame Edna ever find herself in a room with yes, Liz? She did. And there are stories about that. <laughs> Horrible stories. Remind me to call his wife. I was fortunate enough to do a special uh, with, with Barry and, and his friends a few years back. And at the end of the first bit that we did with Edna, we'd go backstage and say, I think that went very well, dear, very well. I said, could you ask Sir Les to pop in uh, before we do the bit with him? And she said, I'll pass that on, darling. And 10 minutes later, G'day, Dick. How are they hanging, son? And he was Sir Les. It was just genius to work with. Ladies and gentlemen, please... In his latter years, Barry Humphreys enjoyed looking back at his stellar career. I'm ready for my pub. <laughs> Barry Humphreys is having a good chuckle watching home videos of himself. I know what all you Sheilas are staring at, I know! You're all looking at my penis, aren't you? And there she is, ladies and gentlemen. He does nothing. He's not here. But never happier than when he's on stage, leaving audiences in stitches. I know what it's like to be wrist deep in grey washing up water <laughs> with peas and mutton fat floating in it, <laughs> looking through chipped blinds at a little yard strewn with broken plastic toys. <laughs> I know what it's like to be reaching for the Valium. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? <laughs> and when, and when things... And when things are really desperate, Turning on the TV and watching loose. <laughs> and everyone loved <laughs> having his characters take the mickey out of them. Edna could say something to the most famous people on the planet and they'd laugh about it. She's acerbic. And Sir Les could be so disgusting, you know, about, ah, um, you know, you just, I don't think you could get away with that these days and yet, Somehow, he did for so long. I'm looking at what you're wearing, darling. I'm trying to think of how to describe it. <laughs> Affordable is the word that springs to my mind. No. I must have seen a hundred Edna shows over the years, and I would always feel so sorry for anyone who arrived late. <laughs> if you walk into the theatre late, you were fair game, and he would just rip you to bits. He was due to take his latest show, The Man Behind the Mask, around Australia next month. Instead of an encore, we are left with the memories. Good night, possum.